Davison here as your host of Meet Me in Moncton. But today, I have the pleasure of interviewing her as our last guest in the first season of Meet Me in Moncton. She is a lover of our community. She's a marketing queen, award-winning realtor, and a fantastic football mom. If you've ever seen her at her kids' football games, she's uh, usually standing up and cheering. She's one of my bestest friends. Please welcome Natalie Davidson. Thank you. How's my, um, I haven't worn a short skirt on the set before. How's that, how's that working out? Uh, <laughs> you told me not to, and I just, I was like, I really like this outfit. I feel like from this angle we're good. Yeah, should I put the blanket? Okay, I'm good. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, so, this is a different angle. Here you are. Here I am. At the finale of season one of Meet Me in Moncton. This is my first time as a guest on a talk show, actually. It's the first time I've ever <laughs> been a talk show host. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how are you, like, how are you honestly feeling after all of these episodes and now it's you and it's the finale? Can you, what has the experience been like? Um, so the experience has been, because it's been so fast, uh, I haven't thought about it a lot. To be honest with you, I haven't thought about it a lot. We have had those moments of like the next day. I'm like, I think this is really something. I think we're really building something special here. Mm -hmm. Or like, or me calling you and be like, what just happened? And then you being like, it was really good. And I'm like, okay, I thought so. Um, mm -hmm. But I personally haven't like absorbed it yet because we haven't even launched the show. That's been the really fun thing about doing these live tapings and spending time with our audience and each other. We haven't even put the show out yet. Yeah. And I have guests calling me and saying, like I had a guest call me today that was on last week. And just from one Facebook post, the show hasn't even launched yet. He's got new clients that have reached out to him because they saw that he was on the show in a photo. Um, the impact in the ripple, I hope, is going to be um, very real. And uh, yeah, I guess I just feel like right at this moment, super hopeful. That's, so that's where I am. What does it mean to you when you reach out to people in our community and ask them to come tell us about them, and then they come here and they share so openly? Ah, oh, I mean, well, it means a lot. I mean, first of all, it means a lot because um, when I usually ask people to do something, it's usually a new idea that's crazy, and they just say yes. So that in and of itself, the yes, is always a, a big one for me, right? Because, um, you know, in the last episode, I was talking to John Gonzalez, who we were joking, and Khalil, who were joking that I've put them in the weirdest spots. I really have. Like, I'm really like, oh. I get it. I drag them out. And I, <laughs> you're a talk show host today. You know, and I, I'll, I'll just message my friends and say, like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Will you be part of it? And with no explanation, because I don't know what it is yet, and they say yes. So just the yes to be on the show. And then when they walk in the door and they see what Derek has created here in this you know, this beautiful set, um, like it's, it's super overwhelming to see it on their faces because I can't, I just can't believe what Sonic Image has done in creating this studio. I can't believe that Jared Betts loaned us a, a, one of his paintings, which he does not do. Mm. I just paid him in paintings. <laughs> um, you know, the way that my friend, like, this, like, last three weeks has just been a really wild exercise in seeing who's there for me and who loves me, and I can't, and then who's in the audience, and, like, some of you are here every week, like, um, you know, my grandmother's here, my dad's here, my sister's here, like, I, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply grateful for all of it. I think that everyone probably agrees that you have this amazing love for Moncton in a way that... Um, we don't see very often. What is it about this community that just gets you so fired up to give and be engaged in our community the way that you do? It's exactly what I just said, right? Yeah. It's like, it's literally what I just said. It's literally, I know that if I called up any one of the season's guests or any one of the people in the audience today and said, hey, um, I know someone who needs something, they would be there. Like, 
not not even just me. Like I have a client who needs something. I have somebody who moved here that that needs something. I know somebody who knows somebody who needs something. You know, I've had so many amazing experiences in this community. Um, before you knew me, and before a lot of people knew me, I used to do. Um, I used to organize a program at Christmas where we would sponsor families that just couldn't afford Christmas, and it was the simplest of things. Like I would post on Facebook and say, hey, I'm collecting for you know this family. And it started with like kind of one family. And then my last Christmas, there was like, I think there were seven families. And my whole dining room was like gifts of, that people were dropping off at my house. Like this wasn't out of my pocket. And I remember my kids were like, oh, whose Lego set is that? Like, you know, it was like, it's kind of hard for them, right? Um, but that last Christmas, you know, my kids were like, getting their piggy banks open and like contributing to and I um, I think that I've been so blessed in this community to raise my children here around all these people and people tell me all the time like your kids are so great and my kids are really really great people um, but it's because of the people around the kids which are all the people on the show all the people here like it's it, like I'm so grateful and so I know that when someone comes into our community if they're just courageous enough to be seen, the people here want to see them and take care of them and, and, and be with them. And that's what I just hope we accomplish, is that more folks are seen, heard, and valued. So you mentioned uh, sharing on social media that you need to hope at Christmas. Did I? <laughs> so you um, share a lot on social media. Kelsey, please. <laughs> <laughs> so people do feel like they know you because of that. Yeah. Is there is there a reason that you openly share so much on so, your social media? It's so funny you asked me this because yeah. uh, Khalil and I were talking about this today on the drive. I don't... Do you know where this really started? My husband worked away for a couple years. And um, although I wasn't like a single mom in like status, I was definitely like single momming it for a couple years. And I was really, my kids were little, um, we were going through some hard times, and I was really tired, and I was really lonely. And, you know, people make fun of people for posting all the time on social, and they have stuff to say about it. But Wait, man, nobody says anything to you about posting too much on social. No, nobody, media. nobody Never? gives me unsolicited advice about social Ever? media. Okay. <laughs> No, no, especially not uh, dudes. Okay. No, 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 no dudes in my social telling me how to do social better. Never. Um, and I remember just thinking, like, I don't know if I could get through this time if I didn't have Facebook. Like, really, right? I couldn't really go out. Like, I had these kids at home, and I was, it was all on me at all times. Like, food, like, sleeping, every, like, I couldn't just go out and go to networking events. Like, I had, I had no, I was always mom. And if I didn't have like Facebook and Instagram at that time, like I would have been so isolated. And so I would post like, if you knew me, like if you knew 2016 me, I posted a lot more than I do now. And I would post any little thing. Like I was just like, I needed someone to talk to. And um, I meet people all the time who have been following me online for like 10 years. You know, and they're like, oh, my God, like, how's this going? And my kids love it when they go out in public and <laughs> people are like, yeah, oh, hey, Jack. And he's like, hey, yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. they get a lot of that. But um, social media is just a, like a megaphone. Like, it's just it's like life. It's life. It's people. Yeah. It's people like to attach meaning to what social media is. Social media is it's literally indifferent. It's like an opportunity to be in the world in a digital way. And we can make, we can vilify it, we can say it's bad, we can say it's good. I don't believe in either of those things. Humans are humans, and they're going to human. They're going to human in person in this room. They're going to human in whatever industry they're in. They're going to human on social media. Humans are just going to human. And if you can really kind of wrap your head around that, you can stop making meaning of things that don't have any. So when you, because you post so much on social, I imagine that it connects you with people that you wouldn't normally connect with on a daily basis. 100%. Has there ever been a time or a person or a situation that has come into your life from posting on social media that has just meant, like, has been life-changing for you? Like, had you not posted, it wouldn't have happened, oh. or anything like that? Like, I mean, I feel like you're trying to, like, lead me into a specific story, so feel free no. to, like, tell me if you have No, one. I'm actually, like, um, I'm, like, waiting for the answer, too. <laughs> Listen, I am so 
incredibly blessed to have the most amazing network. And like, I don't even talk about, or, you know, I don't talk about the folks that I have access to and that I'm friends with outside of our community that are just unbelievable. And it's be it's because of social, for sure, right? I have opportunities. You know, I'm speaking at an event in Toronto um, this year for the second time. I spoke a couple years ago, the Epic community, one of my favorite places to go spend time. And, um, you know, that event is the best of the best in the world. The other speakers of this event are world class, top of their game, all they do, like, bestseller. You look at the New York Times bestseller list, and there they are. And there's Natalie from Moncton. And that's because of social. Like, you know, they want to talk about me and Johnny's TikToks. They do. They want to talk about, like, they want to talk about my hydrangeas. It's absolutely wild. Um, and I'm so blessed. And again, there's just so much opportunity in the world for folks, uh, digitally and in person, if they'll embrace it. So this show is so important to me because it takes that opportunity. And I hope just like juices it up and amplifies it right here in our in our town. Okay. So you mentioned Epic. Yeah. How does Natalie Davison from Moncton get on a stage like <laughs> Epic with all these authors and yeah, well, said, all these okay. yeah, yeah. you know you big the names? Story, yeah, I do. Story. Yeah. I'd story. like to know this one. Okay. <laughs> I mean it's a long one, right? So like, yeah. It all it all starts on episode eight with John Gonzalez when he talks about going to master mindset and I spoke for the very first time, honestly, right? Actually no. It all starts in the Moncton High School Auditorium in nineteen ninety five when I was in grade nine. And we had a guest speaker, and I, I'm dead serious, this is crazy. This is a long story that I'll make short. Um, in the 90s, there weren't people who spoke for a living. That wasn't really a thing. There were a few. There were like four or five in Canada. I'd never heard of it. And uh, we had, anybody listening that went to Moncton High at that time might remember, we had these two, they were professional speakers, they were kind of young, and they just traveled Canada speaking at high schools, Stu and Andy. And they had this whole bit where Stu would add like, the first part of his name is Stu, and he would be like, stupid, and that was his joke. Like, you know, whatever, everything was stupid. It was like really goofy and whatever. And uh, and they got, I remember them, because they got like a two-page spread in the yearbook, because <laughs> it was the 90s. And um, and it was just a picture of this guy, and it just said, Stu slash pit. Like, it was like, whatever, right? So hold, hold that memory. And fast forward. So, you know, I forget I forget about this, except he's the guy in the yearbook for kind of the rest of my life. So I'm 15 at the time. And I speak at Master Mindset as per John. And I, um, one of my best friends is a public speaker. And he brought me into an online community, a Facebook community. that was a mastermind for literally the best speakers in the world. There were 300 people in this, absolute best in the world. It was so intimidating that I, like, did not post for a year and a half. And I was like, just don't let them know I'm here. Like, I'm learning so much. I can't believe I'm in this room, even if it's online. Just don't let them know I'm here. And I'm going to learn as much as I can. I'm going to learn this business. I love this business. And, you know, there's um, all kinds of people in this room online. And one of the speakers, so like fast, this was kind of 2016, 2017. So fast forward to 2019, and I'm growing my career as a speaker a bit. And I'm starting to post a little bit in the community. And I find out one of the speakers is coming to speak in Moncton, this guy that's in the community. And he's coming to level up Mark Black's event. Um, and I wasn't speaking that year, so I went, I went to go watch. I wanted to meet this guy from my online community. Um, and we were going to, a, to an event the next weekend where I was going to meet him in person. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to his talk. And so, he, so Mark gets up to introduce him. And he goes, this is one of my best friends, you know, uh, a mentor, blah, blah, blah. And um, I met him in 1995 when he spoke at Moncton High School. Stu Saunders, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, that's the, the first Stu public speaker I ever heard, right? So I was like, this is amazing. He's in my, like, secret online group. Like, this is so, like, I can't believe this. I'm so excited. And I'm going to see him next week. Wow, Stu's my new best friend. Stu is one of my best friends now. Um, so I meet Stu. I'm like, I was in Moncton High that day. High five. Great to meet you. Yada, yada. And Stu runs the Epic community. So a year later, so they had, you know, they had their first event at the Epic community. All my heroes spoke. 14 speakers. Unreal. 
and it came time for a call for speakers for the next year. And I knew that pretty much everybody in this community was going to apply, first of all. So, you know, the best in the world. And I knew that I literally had nothing they had. <laughs> like, I had nothing. I had no speaker reel. I had no book. Um, I did not. All, they had all these careers, and I was, I just didn't have any of it. Um, but what I knew for sure is that if I was going to be the best, I was going to be picked if I was the best at something. And the only thing I could be the best at was myself. So I couldn't try to be them. If I tried to be them, I was going to lose. So I like picked up my phone and you know, I go to the website and I had a friend that had attended so I knew everything I could know about this conference and they really prided themselves on being different than other conferences. So I pick up my phone and I look right in it in my like, uh, house on Park Street in my living room and I go, hey, Epic Community, my name is Natalie Davison. You said you're a different kind of conference and I'm so glad to hear that because I'm a different kind of speaker. Mm-hmm. And I proceeded to tell them why I had nothing in common with all the other speakers. <laughs> and why if they were truly different, where people were going to come in and have more authentic connections and be more real and less rehearsed and all of that stuff that they said, these juicy relationships you're going to build with the speakers, then I was the perfect person. Because look at me, I'm just making a cell phone video. And, um, and the answer is yes. And I get to speak at Epic. So, and you were in my car a couple months ago when I was talking to Stu, who's now one of my besties. I talk to him almost every day. Yeah. Uh, Stu from Moncton High School in 1995. <laughs> and, um, and he asked me to come as a returning faculty, which is very rare. And I get to go again this year. So everything that you do has purpose for you. It's, yeah. You don't just do anything just to do it. No. Um, So that brings me to real estate. (laughs) So real estate um, can kind of, to the outside world, seem very transactional. What does a person like Natalie, who does everything with purpose, where do you find your purpose in real estate? Well, I do believe I'm really good at marketing. You are. (laughs) Like, I do believe I'm incredible. I really do believe I'm, like, really good at marketing. Um, I'm not afraid to say that anymore. And... um, it's fun to help companies make more business, more money, I guess, but it's a lot more fun to help real people uh, make their lives better. And I don't think people understand the humanity of this business. Agree. I think people cheapen what we do and take it down to a transaction, and it's just super disappointing because um, you and I both know that the phone calls I get are not like, hey, Natalie, I want to sell my house and make the most money. I get phone calls like, hey, Natalie, my mom passed. Hey, Natalie, we're putting um, a loved one, you know, has to go into a home. Hey, Natalie, um, I'm sick. A lot of that. Hey, Natalie, our family is no longer going to be together. You know, we're going through a massive life transition. The phone calls I get, occasionally we get like, hey, Natalie, we want a bigger house, but like, that's not, the, that's not even 50% of the time. The conversations that we're having are often in people's hardest life moments. And um, I was talking to a friend about this the other day because we are in a season right now where we have been, I believe, blessed with a lot of clients that are going through exceptionally challenging times right now. And, um, and when I say we're blessed with that, I realized when when this friend was like, this must be really hard. And I was like, no. I was like, I don't want, I wouldn't want them with anybody else. Like, I wouldn't want to imagine them, these these folks going through these hard times in the hands of somebody who didn't care this much, right? And so I know that's why you are the perfect person to be with me on this journey because you care about people so much. And I I say to my clients all the time, I'm like, I don't care if there's a transaction at the end of this or not. Here's what we're going to do with your life. And that matters to me a lot. And we align ourselves with partners who feel that way. Um, We're very blessed to have one in the room tonight. Um, Who, you know, lots of times we're making people's lives better. And sometimes, I think we're always probably making people's lives as good as they can be. Um, But when people talk about realtors, the way they talk about realtors, man, I just... Mm -hmm. 
I, tr- I want to troll them so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Make a couple sassy TikToks right back at them. Yeah, because you know they're doing it wrong. You, if you just see dollars and cents, you're doing it. You're just doing it wrong. You've never done any sassy stories back, have you? I don't do. I don't. No, I don't talk about. I don't make fun of people on social media. Only people that are mean. I only talk back at people that are mean on social media. I'm defending against the bullies. Yeah. Mm. So anyone that's thinking about selling their house right now for whatever reason, yeah, or going through something that maybe feels overwhelming to them, we hear a lot about some folks that they want to sell, but they're going through so much. It's so overwhelming to them. What would you tell them? I mean, you know, again, we've been really focusing on this in our business and thinking about how can we um, shift this from we sell a house to, like, we're going to manage what's going on, right? And uh, we haven't gotten our marketing around that yet figured out because we want more people to know we do this. But um, it really started with a very special client call in the summer. It was a friend of the family that uh, was a health situation and they needed to go like they needed everything they needed everything done there was just no capacity to to manage this entire thing and in that situation you know we jumped right to action um we had we have a team of declutterers in the house that just pared things down to get it staged for sale um we had we had our team of cleaners go in like you know, we had, and then we had the declutters come in again at the end and like empty the house and get everything packed. Like we were able to coordinate a full service start to finish, um, service that I'm super proud of. Right. So these folks, you know, in a, in a very challenging health situation did not have to do anything. Like we were able to manage that whole transition with the partners and teams that we have around us. And I'm just like incredibly proud of that. Whether it's that you you don't want to do all that stuff, but like there are many times where people can't. And so to be able to pull in everybody to just lighten that load and it's crazy coincidence that house closed today. Hmm. And uh, I was talking to the vendor today and they're now settled in, in their new place and the transaction completed. And, you know, I know and you know that every step of the way, we could just feel their load lightening. And that's really the gift, like, of this work. Yeah, you and I talk a lot about how um, that stuff is what fuels us. Both of us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, the hours are long and we put we do work very, very, very hard. Yep. Um, but it's those things that absolutely fuel us to keep doing what we're doing. One hundred percent. Yeah. 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 You, you know, you do the right thing and the transactions will come. I don't worry about that so much. Uh, but I really, I really want to make sure that people are making that next step in their life that they need to make. And they have really good, I'm, I'm extremely protective also of our client. I don't know if you guys can tell that about me. (laughs) I sometimes wonder if I have a brand problem where everybody thinks I'm like, so like sunshine and rainbows. And then they have to encounter me when I'm protecting a client and like they, they're like, what, what is hap- who, what is happening? Right? Like this, uh, this isn't who you, this, this is not the lady on the uh, unicorn balloon. Um, I'm definitely not always the lady on the unicorn balloon. Like I have a real, um, a real side that, uh, that I, I don't compromise when I'm protecting my clients. Not and that's all. not, not even, not yeah. even a little bit, yeah. um, because it's so important to me and that's my job. And it's even, it amazes like me, like I work across from you every single day and it never, never doesn't amaze me to watch you protect our clients. Like, it's just, you really do have such a love and respect and super genuine that you will see them through their transaction, through their life event. You take it very, uh, very seriously. Very sad. I, don't, I have no, I have no chill. You do <laughs> not want to no see what happens chill. if someone says rude things about a client's house on Facebook. Like, like when you get the stranger comments, like, <laughs> They should have cleaned their siding. I'm like, what, Cheryl? <laughs> oh man, I have, I have, like, I have such <laughs> genuine respect also for the vulnerability of opening your home and then publishing on the internet. Like, please mm-hmm. think about what that is for a person, right? And when we talk about the larger transact, like the larger life transition that happens to have a transaction involved, like, think about this. Like, when you see photos of a house online, it can be so easy to be like, ugh who picked that wall color? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, maybe they're three-year-olds. 
And maybe you don't know what's going on with a three-year-old, and maybe they're not willing to paint that to stage it, and I am not going to ask them to if I don't think it's absolutely necessary to, to, to change the house. Like, let me tell you, if you're... If we're in a house and something is absolutely not necessary to get them the highest and best, I'm not making them do it. My clients are not spending more money than they have to spend to sell their house. See, you're seeing it now. This is the pile where I'm not on a unicorn. God. I have no ego about that stuff. You're not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to encourage you to spend a penny you don't need to spend. And, um, and man, I don't want to hear the general like negativity online when people are just playing like you know house hunter and they're not really buying houses because these are people's freaking homes. They've raised their children. Maybe they've had losses. Like these are the places where everything has happened, and like mm. they might be in a financial crisis. You, like, you don't, don't know. know. You do not know what's happening in that life, in in that life, and in that home. Well, and yeah, even for a lot of us. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but like the doorbell ringing and having like an unexpected guest is just like <gasps> panic. Imagine just opening up your house for the whole world. Yes. And how much, you know. I just told Derek, I don't, I do not, do you know how seriously I take this? I just told Derek tonight before we filmed, I, I would not walk in to an appointment for 630 at 629. I will not. I'll sit yeah. in the, my car in the driveway like a weirdo for half an hour if I have to. I will not come to your house a second early because I don't know that That's you're true. not. Do you know how scared people are to have us in and how long it's they terrifying. wait because they think they're going to get judged? It's wild. There's so much mental um, load on people having us in because they think we're going to judge their home. And you know what? We're going to put a value on their home. So that's how that feels, right? Like that's, un it's unfortunate. Like that's how it feels. And so as hard as we work to make sure people know that we can see beyond whatever's going on in the home. Um, I know that right until 629, there are sometimes people who are scrubbing that last thing or filling that last garbage bag or whatever it is. I am not walking in until 630 on the dot. I respect what this journey is, you know, and I just, yeah, I take it very seriously. So when you meet with those clients and people worry about like oversharing their life or something, they sit down, how do you feel when they're actually vulnerable with you and say like, hey, Nat, listen, I have this, this, this going on in my life. How does that affect how you do your job? It makes it, makes it so much easier, not easier. That's the wrong word. It makes me so much more effective if clients are so much more honest. Mm -hmm. I think people think, it's not just about real estate, this is like life. People think we can tell a story, we can tell parts of a story, and it'll just be enough. But in the nonverbal, in the connection, in the lack of connection, in the disconnection, there are more messages, right? So you can say like, you know, I'm selling my house because I want to cash out in this market. But like sometimes I can see, feel, and hear without words that that's not what's happening. And it would be so much better <laughs> if people would have the, cur or have the courage to f hire a realtor you can, you can talk to about what's going on. So find a realtor that you trust enough to tell the truth to and trust them enough that they're not going to disclose what they shouldn't disclose. But if you can, then they can take their experience and process and knowledge and put it to work for you. If I don't understand whether time or money is of the essence, then I can't make the right plan for you. And sometimes... Sometimes folks are on a time, like a quick time, like maybe they could be in danger of losing their home. Time is more important than money if you're in danger of losing your home. My strategy is going to be different. And I won't be able to do that and protect you fully if I don't know the whole story. So it might not be me, but you got to find a partner in transactions like this when you're going through hard stuff that you will tell the truth to. If it's not me, it's okay. But you've got to find somebody that you are okay telling the whole story to so that they can truly help you get the result you're after. Because you don't have the answers. That's why you need somebody. And, and you want to, and I know you want to, but you'll get there faster if you trust someone. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay, good. That's a lot of real estate talk. I know. So everyone always says if they meet me or meet you or, you know, whisper t to me about you. How does she do it all? How does Natalie, she does so much. How does she do it all? How do you do it all? How do you take care of yourself? Like, I think that there's a whole part of you that maybe 
people don't know about that okay. you you seem like you do a lot what you do I do but I also think that you care for yourself and what you need so Ryan Davison would want me to answer the question how do you do it all he, his answer would be trophy husband so he would say <laughs> and then he would ask you if you saw his new mustache yet um, <laughs> But obviously, you know, people used to say, like, when we had the twins, people would be like, wow, how did you do it? And I was like, well, I mean, first of all, I've got this, like, life partner that is absolutely not 50-50. He carries, uh, he carries the vast majority of the household load. And, and packs your snacks for the day. Brings me snacks to work. Um, again, we've had seasons, right? I shared, like, he was away for three years and it was all on me. And, and you know, we've had seasons in our marriage of... Of sharing that load, and now we're in a season where he has um, he holds the fort down, so to speak, which is incredible. That's who he is as a person. He's an absolutely incredible human, and I think that uh, I know for sure that I wouldn't do what I do without him. So there's 100% Ryan Davison, trophy husband. Um, <laughs> my kids are also older, which is you know helpful. They don't really want to hang out with me that much, so there's that too. Um, <laughs> but um, in terms of how do I take care of myself? A couple of things. I think there's like a core fundamental mindset that's really important, and then there's like some actions. Um, from a mindset perspective, I don't know if you like. You probably agree. More than anyone else I know, I am highly aware of the value of an hour of my time. Like mm-hmm. I am, like just like I know the value of an hour of my time. Now, sometimes I don't honor the value of my time. Um, ask my team and you know I work way too many hours and do things I shouldn't do in the business but I know that I'm doing it um, but I'm very very aware and so I work hard on not over committing and then when I catch myself over committing I change my behavior immediately and we, we do that so there's a lot of that um, and then you know I, I, I'm just non-negotiable about taking care of myself so every single day I do absolutely move my body. Um, you know, yesterday I went on a walk with a friend who's a client and we had a great time on our walk. I get my daily walk in or my run or whatever I'm doing that day. And we did that, but it was still like my mind wasn't clear. We had it like, it was coming out of like um, a lot of stuff the last couple of weeks. My mind was not clear. I put my, I got my time in. I could have checked the box and said like non-negotiable met. I, you know, spent 45 hours moving my body, but it, I was not clear. And that's why I do all this. So, um, I dropped her off, got in my car, drove to Centennial and did another 45 minutes for my mind. Right. Mm-hmm. And until I felt clear and calm and in control, and I wish that I had figured this out when my kids were little or like another time in my life, but, um, but at least I have it now. And I can't, like I'm allergic to trees. I'm not, I don't like camping. Like there's so many things about the outdoors that are just like so wrong to me. And also uh, I don't think I could live without it. Like, yeah, it's, worth, it's all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I also think that that's where um, all of your create, like a lot of your creative thoughts come from too. Well, because you're the person on the other side yeah, of my voice. Yeah. So text. like she'll be walking, and then I'll get a voice text of like this amazing, mind blowing idea, and it all comes from these moments when you're moving your body, Listen, clearing if your the, mind. If the things I thought up on my walks all came to life, <laughs> you guys would say I'm busier than John Gonzalez, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Favorite local purchase that you've made in the last six months? Um, I'm going to thank Johnny again for introducing me to Crave Rowing last winter. Okay. Um, it's absolute game changer. The only complaint I have is it's so hard to get in because it's so popular. Okay. It's uh, So it's a studio with rowing classes and it's heated. And in the summer, you know, I I took some time off from it, but I just went again the other week and I'm starting to gear back into like the cold months. And last year I really suffered with um, some seasonal like mental health challenges. And this was a game changer. So getting in the infrared heat and rowing and the lights are low and the music's amazing and the instructors are so high energy and you're just like in a completely different place. It's super transformative. I can't, I can't say enough. Yeah, I hear uh, people say that. You're not like, I've heard that before. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, you go in, there's just like so many things I love about the place. You go in and, and the owners have four kids and the kids are like doing laundry and like working the desk. And I'm just like, 
blown away <laughs> while simultaneously like my self-esteem <laughs> is destroyed because my kids don't know how to do laundry yet, right? And they're like pretty much adults. Um, so I'm like, oh, bad mom. But like, this is really, really great. Like great, just great, great atmosphere. I can't say enough. And uh, um, that's definitely my number one okay. local purchase lately, yeah. Okay, what excites you lately? I mean this show. Yeah. 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 For sure. And maybe football. Oh, my God, high school football. You guys don't even understand. We are at, obviously, my kids' football games on the way. And, like, also, also, right? I don't know any other real estate team that does the amount of open houses that we do. Like, you know, clients say all the time, they're like, you guys are the hard work, hardest working team in town. And I'm like, yeah, we're, we're kids from restaurant families. Like, that's, that's how we roll. Um, so, you know, we're running open houses all weekend and whatever. But uh, my family somehow finds time to be, obviously, my kids' football games. And then, as a family, we go to every other high school football game so my kids can watch their competitors. And uh, my dad joins us. And it's the coolest thing because the kids still want to like, be around us for that, you know, for football. So um, it's really like my husband played competitive football and um, he coaches the kids. So it's really their thing that I like latch myself to so that I can still be around my kids as long as possible. Um, but yeah, I'm super enthusiastic about high school football. I'm very excited that as of this taping, um, the Moncton Mustangs, like, ranked Moncton High School Purple Knights number one. What? Yeah, nice. I didn't know in that. the league, yeah. Last year we were zero and eight, so I could talk about high school football a lot. Um, and less year from Riverview than I love the Royals. And you want to sell a house? I'm, I'm a Royals fan when I'm <laughs> listing your house. Um, and if you're listing a house in the North End, I'm a Trimble fan when I'm at your house. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, we're, we're super into that. The show excites me. Um, you know, like on a very personal note, like I, I think I mentioned that my grandmother's in the audience tonight. My grandparents have been here at every taping, and my father and my mm -hmm. sister. And um, I get to watch my grandparents cut in a rug and dancing at my sister's mm -hmm. wedding this weekend. And I don't know any 43 year old people whose grandparents are uh, out, like living it up like mine. And I'm just like so blessed and grateful. So my grandparents are pretty exciting to me these days. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Natalie? I knew I would be the longest episode. We're way over time. I'm not. Oh, even. I didn't yeah. know there was. We a didn't timer. even need a timer on this. I wasn't one. trained. Yeah, sorry. So Natalie, um, our friendship uh, began and was cemented years ago when you helped Ray and I through a very challenging um, situation. Uh, you helped us to, to do what we knew we needed to do and were afraid to do. Um, and since that time, I have watched you in so many things just grow into your strength and your authenticity. And I know we've had conversations where you um, because so many people think, oh, well, I know Natalie because I see her so much on social media. But I also know, as Tammy said, you do things very intentionally and you do keep parts of yourself for yourself I and do. for your family. And I just was wondering if you would speak on that, the setting of boundaries and people, the perception that people have that they really know someone based on a few seconds yeah. of a reel or a video. Thank you for that question. That's an awesome question. Um, I think it like speaks to sometimes when I have to be direct with people and they, um, in my job and specifically other realtors when I'm negotiating or upholding boundary protecting client and they um, react in a way that you wouldn't expect, like like big reactions. And I often think like, oh, they probably have followed me for a long time and only think that I'm like sunshine and rainbows and that's part of me um, but that's not that's not all of me right so um, so it's interesting you say that because I think about this a lot um, you know like I don't I don't share a lot about my I don't share a lot about my family I don't I should talk about the kids I talk about football um, I follow my heart and I talk to my family a lot and about this so, so anything I share like anything I share about my kids they they 
absolutely approve it first. And, you know, last year there was a lot of, like, waffle content, and then one of my kids was like, I don't like it when you talk about us and food. So you might have noticed there's, there's no more waffle content. Um, but that's super important, right? So to me, and even recently I was, you know, doing someone, something with someone I love. They were like, I don't want to see this on social. I was like, absolutely cool. So I try to make sure that I have conversations with people about, wh- about their comfort level, um, to make sure I uphold that. And then, you know, I always like, I don't, I never thought about this in the context of, of social before, but I do about public speaking and and writing a talk and what are you going to share with an audience? Because you have a lot of power when you're on stage and you're speaking to an audience. Um, but you're also very vulnerable. And the advice I give people who are writing a talk and the advice I take myself is, um, don't reveal what you haven't healed. And, you know, once it's out there, it's out there. And so if I'm sharing something that seems vulnerable or tough or whatever, that means, like, the healing is done, like, there's no scab on the wound, and it's not, like, the scar has, like, it's, like, now the color of my skin and my tan, and, like, I'm, like, there's nothing there. You know, I'm unhurtable on that issue, right? If I share it and anybody comes at me about it, it's going to bounce right off. Um, I think about that a lot. If I'm going to share a story, and if somebody said my wor- the, what is the pers- worst possible reaction I could imagine to this? If someone said that to me, would it hurt? And if it does, it stays in the, stays in the vault. Comes to therapy. <laughs> oh, you're getting payback. <laughs> <laughs> this is not payback. This is- so um, I consider us friends, and I'm also a fan. And I say that just because I admire you and all the things you've done. But I've seen you transition. From you've seen since, it all. Yeah, since you came back to New Brunswick and transitioned. My question is, do you make um, short-term, long-term goals, or do you just wake up and something goes, poof, oh my gosh, I should do this? <laughs> Yeah. I love that question. Um, I am super goal oriented and I, I really believe everybody should have a vision for their, for their life. And if you don't, uh, send me a DM and I'll teach you my process. <laughs> I have a process. I, it's, it's a big part of what I would work with on my brand clients. If you don't have a vision for the impact you're going to create on the world, you're just transacting money and you're going to fall apart. Like your business is not going to it's not going to turn you on after a while. Money's not going to do it. So you need a vision for the impact you're creating in the world. In my vision, I, I just said it out loud. Sorry, I touched my mic. My vision, I just said to Tammy, I just like wove it in to like give her a little uh-uh. It's written on my wall. I wrote it in 2019. In my vision for my life, the world that I'm trying to create is a world where more people feel seen, heard, and valued. Which means that if I'm doing a real estate transaction, if I'm working with a brand, if I'm speaking, if we're doing this show, that's the point. If more people feel seen, heard, and valued, that's the point of everything I do. So that's a long-term vision. And then, you know, you can't measure that, right? Like, so then you break that back down into, like, what do those goals look like? So, I mean, I have financial goals. Um, I have health goals. I have um, connection goals in my relationships. And... I uh, have those broken down to like annual, and then I look at them three times a day. And that's from my coach. It's one of my non-negotiables. So I shared that like, you know, movement's a daily non-negotiable. I have a list of daily non-negotiables, and looking at my goals three times a day is one of them. Uh, Dan Martell is my coach. I'm going to give him props for that. Um, that's a core part of his program, and um, it's, it's completely life-changing. You've seen, the, you've seen the change in, mm-hmm. in me since I started this process. I was doing like daily movement before I uh, started the daily non-negotiables. It was already part of my life, but it wasn't, I didn't say it that way. I didn't think of it that way. Um, but I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is look at my goals and then, you know, read 10 pages. And I have a, I have a whole routine. Thank you for asking me that. I actually think you're one of the most goal oriented people. And I'm kind of like one of the people that wake up and I'm like, oh, what's today going to bring? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're with me. And I've got that handled. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> but you, yeah, well, you're, 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 you're yeah. bringing your goals in too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We think, do we have a meeting tomorrow about your goals? Uh, you yeah. or Darby? Yes, yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. We have, I have goal meetings now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to reflect on the last we're month. We're going to reflect. We're going to yeah. look at the goals you set last month, yeah. and we're going to measure against them. And, you know, yeah. and I know that was scary for you before. Yeah. But how about now? Uh, it's way easier now. I'm still working on it. It's still uh, a challenge for me. But when I first started working with you, I remember saying to you, like, I can't even think of a goal. I've been in survival for so long in my life that goals weren't something that I even thought about. And I completely relate and yeah. have been there too. Yeah. yeah. So now and it's you've grown like, so much in yeah. the last few years. I'm out of the survival and I'm, I'm into the thinking about goals. So yay. I'm like gonna cry just looking at you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you an easy question. You ask me any question. I'm good. Uh, no, with uh, with your speaking, um, you've been doing this for a while. Do you have, and maybe you do also with your like uh, when you post on social media, when you do your dances and all that. Do you have like a little ritual that you do before you go on stage? to like get your nerves out or what's your process for that? Um, I, <laughs> I like to joke that like my process when I have a <laughs> keynote is to um, creatively torture myself as long as possible and then write like and then like do my talk like the 10 minutes before. Uh, that's, it's a big <laughs> joke but like I you know I'm not um, I'm not one of the speakers that delivers the same keynote every time and that's very unusual. I just had a, I was just interviewed on a podcast by a speaker about this, and this guy is like, he's, he's big time, and delivers the same words every time. Same jokes every time. Knows when you're going to laugh. Knows when you're going to, and, and that's not my jam. So um, maybe it's my, maybe it will be someday, but um, it's not. I really want to come in and talk about what I care about that day, and that is super risky and f- frowned upon in the industry, right? I joke that I'm like a semi-professional speaker because um, professional speakers don't do that. And I don't care. Like, I am here <laughs> to talk to you about what's, hap- what's happening today is not the same as what happened 10 days ago. I'm not the same person I was 10 days ago. And so I might know something more. Or I might have learned something more. You might teach me something more. So my ritual is to go a little bit nuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I go, I go a little bit like... <laughs> I called you, I was doing a keynote last week, and I called Tammy like half an hour before. I'm like, I'm not, I don't even know a thing I'm going to say. I'm like, I, this is the one, this is the time that it all burns down. I don't know a thing I'm going to say. She's like, what if you start with this story about, you know, George at school? And I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> hang up on her, right? Like, throw, I hang up, I do that a lot. I'm like, oh my God, I have an idea. Bam, and hang up, throw five slides in, you know, and just today, uh, somebody was telling, I thought it was listening, but it wasn't. Somebody was telling me, they're like, oh my God, I saw this person that was at your talk the other week. They said it changed their whole life. I was like, that's amazing. But what it is, is not the word that I said the perfect words. That's not what's happening. It's that we were present together in a moment and we shared ideas. And that's what's, that's what's real and that's what I'm interested in. So my ritual is to take a moment of imposter syndrome to say I'm not doing this like everybody else and so maybe I'm a failure. And then you just like take a deep breath and do it anyway. That's my ritual. Yeah. A little unconventional. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. No more questions? No more questions? No more questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Now that we've met in Moncton, let's get to know each other a little bit better. You can join us and our crew and our guests at our exclusive Facebook community. Just go to Facebook and search Meet Me in Moncton Insiders.